Kenyatta here. Um, uh, women, um, economic, women economic empowerment has a lot to do with the ability for women to partici participate in wealth creation, to have uh, opportunities to access markets, to have opportunity to um, be independent and not be dependent on anybody or any institution or any system for their livelihood and the livelihood of their families. And it's all encompassing, including um, control over their bodies, over their time and over their desires and wants. So economic, women economic empowerment has to do with the wholeness of the woman, mm -hmm. especially when it has to uh, do with um, empowering her financially so that she can meet her needs and the needs of her family. See, I like that definition because the logic said more people would just think when they hear two words, mm. economic empowerment, they're thinking, they're just basically trying to say she should make money, right? No, it's but when you explain that. it that yeah. way, it covers all aspects of it. Yes. You, you literally said it's the wholeness yes, of, of the woman. woman. Yes. I think people should take that very mm. seriously. So thank you very much for that definition mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that we have established what economic empowerment is, what would you say are some factors that are responsible for the economic disadvantage that women face in today's society? And I know you said wholeness of the woman, but people also understand it to be, when you say economics, it means largely finances. And we both understand that to a large extent, a lot of women still face financial disadvantage in their lives, careers as well, regardless of whether they do white collar, blue collar jobs, it goes across okay. board. So what would you say are some factors responsible for this economic disadvantage that women face? I think one of the key factors is ignorance in our society. Mm. There's a lot of ignorance in the society, especially when it has to do with women. Um, our men folk need to understand that women are, we are all part of each other. We are not really here. I, I think they have to understand that we are not really here to compete. We're here to complete. If they have that understanding that without us, us, they cannot be whole, they cannot be fully complete, then they will look at women from a different point of view. So I think... Uh, our men folk, even our women folk, because sometimes one of our great, uh, part of the greatest problems that women have is lack of support from their women folk as well. And if we all understand the value of women and the fact that we are all important, are parts of each other, and that we're here to uh, bring wholeness to each other, to complete each other, then I think um, the, the stereotype mm. that men or even the society have of women will begin to will decrease and then women will have access to economic empowerment. It is very, very important that that, that enlightenment is made available to all at every point in time. Because if the society understands the value that a woman has to offer in the world, in the society, the influence she has on, on, on her children, on her man, then we will do all we can to make sure that women are empowered both physically, spiritually, mentally, financially, in every way. And that should be the sole responsibility of a man to make a woman empowered all around and not just to look at a woman maybe as, oh, you have to, you belong in the kitchen or maybe you're just a sex object. Okay. It is the role of the man. That's where he shows that he's a leader. Mm. So that's how the, his strength is highlighted. Yes. Okay, so you, most of what you said hinges around ignorance. Yes. Which is why you said the solution to that is enlightenment. enlightenment yes. So apart from ignorance, is there anything else? Or you think ignorance stems into every other aspect? Yes, because ignorance means absence, ab absence of, of knowledge. knowledge. And knowledge Absolutely. is power. Knowledge is key. Uh, uh, knowledge is everything because without knowledge you cannot produce wealth you cannot create wealth without education you cannot uh, go up the ladder mm -hmm. I, I mean poverty is as a result of lack of education lack of information lack of formal and informal education. informal education and informal education is key as well Absolutely. because there's a lot of education that is outside our curriculum that is very vital and necessary for, uh, for daily the, life. Yes, for the women folk and for the sustenance of our society. So if the if there's knowledge, enough knowledge, mm. if there's enough enlightenment, if there's enough education, 
then I think that the issue of women emp uh, 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 lack of empowerment for women will be uh, uh, sorted out. And I think knowledge is something that we have to be intentional about. Mm. We are intentional about every other thing. Oh, how we what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, but we're not intentional about knowledge, especially in this side of you know the world. the world in the western world yeah you see a lot of people into research you see a lot of libraries everywhere you see uh people reading a lot but there's something somebody said and, and i agree with the person oh, who are you about to quote yes. <laughs> if you want to put something <laughs> if you don't want a black man to know something uh, put it in yes your book. <laughs> and anytime I, I i i think about that i get i get really i feel very bad mm -hmm. because it's lack of knowledge that is keeping us where we are. So we have to be intentional. We have to know. If we do know, if we seek knowledge the way we're supposed to, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that um, any any country will see our back. Absolutely. Because we have all that it takes. Yes. It's just ignorance. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we can go on and on yeah. about ignorance because I agree that it stems into everything from yeah. our education to health to politics. Yeah. Everything, everything literally and it, it applies to both male and, and, and female yes. so it, there's literally no gender gap no when gender it comes gap. to the effect of oh, ignorance yeah. so now yeah. let's delve into women's economic em empowerment do you think that the lack of or let me let me call it women's economic disempowerment do you think that women's economic disempowerment is a cause or an effect of conflict in our society today I think it's both. It's both a cause and it's also an effect. When uh, women are dis disempowered, mm -hmm. um, women are not happy. And a happy man, and an unhappy man is an angry man. And women are not happy. They are they are they are hungry. Like a hungry man is an angry man. A hungry <laughs> woman is an angry woman. And when you have um, people that are not happy, that they are unhappy, people make people around them unhappy. Mm. angry people make people around them angry and before you know it there's conflict. a conflict there are conflicts everywhere because people are angry there's this um joke i i, I saw online when where someone said oh, why is it that in nigeria before you ask anybody for anything you have to say, i beg no vessel <laughs> what the heck because everybody's angry They're angry for some reason or the other yes because the level of poverty the level of ignorance is so much women are so disadvantaged they are so disempowered i work a lot with women at the grassroots level. I, mm. I work a lot with community women, and I see what they go through. I see what they, what they, you know, their challenges. A lot of them can't feed themselves. Talk, talk more of feeding their families, and the ignorance is getting more and more. Because I talked to one of them, and he said, "Oh, you know, this my womb is so open. I'm, I have to keep popping out children." I said. You have to keep popping up. Yes. My yeah, that's open. definitely and ignorance. That's ignorance. That's definitely ignorance. Yes, she can't feed herself. She can't feed these children. They are roaming around on the streets. But you but keep popping them out because her, them womb out. Oh, her womb is still open. Oh, God will take care of them. So it's, um, and then of course that creates, that creates more conflicts. Which leads we, to the yes. effect. That, that question was key for me. I, yeah. I needed to hear the response yeah. to that because some people feel that it's only as an effect of conflict. Mm. A school of thought would say that it's an is as an effect of conflict, not necessarily mm. a cause. Again, goes back to ignorance because yes. they feel that women are probably not in that position enough to incite conflict. So rather than understanding that they're just as equal as men, men and yes. they feel the same emotions, yes. probably even more intensely that than men. the men do. And these things can promote conflict rather than alienate them or decrease them. Yeah. So it's both a cause. And, and an effect. effect. And I, I want to add something when you talk about gender equality, because um, a lot of people don't understand gender equality. Mm. Gender equality is not about sameness. It's about it's about equal, knowing that we are equal. It's not that we are the same. We are not the same. We respect the fact that you're a man. We respect that. Absolutely. I'm a woman. I respect that. And I respect the fact that But we are equal in the sense that God made us equal. We are not. And I would always say that we are not competing with the men. Yes, you said complete, that. not we are compete. Completing. We are mm. complementing them. We are completing them. We don't want to be high up there because we want to show them, oh, and we know, can do like it better, my, so to yes, speak. we can do it better. I, I always like what my how my little daughter defined it. He said that women, um, men, men can uh, what a man can do 
it's not necessarily that a woman can do better because when you say a woman can do better, it's like, okay, you're trying to compete with the man. She said, she said a woman can do also. Hmm. And that is it. Also. Absolutely. You know, so that's what we want the men to understand because sometimes men are afraid. Oh, if we empower this lady, she's going to lord it over me and all that. No. The woman, we are. We also work on the woman to understand that she has a role to play, especially when it, do, it, it has to do with the men. But that the men also have to understand that it's all about bring us to the table. Let's mm. talk with you. Let's let's discuss with you. We're not saying we will be man, mm -hmm. but we will play that role to complement you, to influence your decisions which, in the right way. Which eventually benefits both Everybody. of us. It benefits the children, it Absolutely. benefits the man and benefits the society. All right. Thank you very much. This is 20 minutes past hour three on your Women Radio WFM 91.7. You're listening to Women Voices for Peace. And today we're discussing the significance of women's economic empowerment in building lasting peace. My guest today is Patricia Piergold Ezechi. Patricia Piergold Ezechi. And she's the legal coordinator of Project Women and Youth Network. So uh, uh, this this subjects of economic empowerment and disempowerment, because we're discussing both peri yeah. pursuit, yes, is one that has spanned a lot of conversations. But now I want us to draw it down to Nigeria. What are some issues that cause, or what are some effects rather, that are caused by economic disadvantage of women? Well, um, we see it all around. Uh, our society is laden with a lot of, um, there's a lot of poverty because when women are not empowered, it, it, it breeds more poverty mm. because they cannot influence their children. They're not there to influence their children. It, it breeds a lot of crime. We see a lot of kidnaps going on, a lot of ritual killings. We see a lot of banditry. We see a lot of things going on as a result of poverty. And it has to do with the woman. If the woman is economically empowered, she won't want her children on the streets. Absolutely. She wouldn't want that. If she's economically empowered, she'll be, she'll be, she will have the time to train them. She will have the, 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 um, uh, the, 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 uh, the temperament to be at peace with herself and at peace with her family and to raise them up in an orderly way. E economic empowerment, like I said before, has to do a lot with wholeness, mm. has to do a lot with wholeness. It's not just having money, but uh, using that money to impact the lives of young people, to impact, impact the lives of the children within the family, impact the life of the husband. Because when a woman is economically empowered, she can help move the, the family forward. forward. Now, what we have is that Women, because they are they are so so disempowered, they send their children on the streets, go steal, go cheat, go. Even some of them encourage them to go into four one four one nine business, into yeah, doing oh, oh this is the only way we can fend for ourselves. Hmm. So the effects are seen everywhere, and you know that is what is causing the lots of conflicts, lot lots of insecurity because women are stereotyped. And they are not empowered. It, it, funny enough, with the, all the enlightenment or supposed enlightenment and education we have, we still see that men still stereotype women. They still stereotype. They still have it at the So more education, more, yes, more education, more enlightenment. All the, the way education through. has to be on a higher level. It's not just the curriculum. There has to be capacity building workshops, trainings for men and women to understand what this equality is all about. I agree. I agree, because it, it goes back to teaching the men to understand that it's not about competition. Yes. It's not about yes, that. They need to understand Thank that. you. Thank you very much. Now, let's get the the um, conversation down to how it affects peace and how it how it uh, yes affects building lasting peace. Why is it critical to peace to world peace that women have more? economic power, more financial foothold? Why is it important to world peace that that happens? Well, like I earlier said, uh, if a woman is not empowered, uh, it, it, it breeds poverty. Poverty for uh, for her children, mm -hmm. and that would lead to the, the children being on the streets. That will lead to crime. That will lead to conflicts. Crime leads to a lot of conflicts. Um, poverty has led to a lot of conflicts in the world today. Um, because people are poor and hungry and angry, they turn to violence. 
they turn to crime, like I said before. Mm. And if women are empowered, they are at peace with themselves. And if they are at peace with themselves, then they can breed, exude that peace to their children, to their in, in their families. And the family is the units of the society. If there is peace in this in the family, then there will be peace in the society. Mm. You know, so it's an all-encompassing uh, uh, strategy. If a woman is empowered, she can be um, uh, uh, confident enough to come to the peace, uh, uh, to, the, to the reconciliation table. And th there's something about a woman talking that appeals, a woman talking intelligently, yes. that appeals to the men folk. Absolutely. You know, a, 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 when a man is ranting with another man, oh... You know, it's uh, you know, it's like, man to man, man, we'll to man. Sort it out. But when an intelligent woman begins to talk and say, Hey, no, She's this has to audience. be this way, this has to be that way. Okay, they just start listening mm -hmm. to the woman. A woman is has always been a, a negotiator, even right from the family. We're always negotiating. Oh, don't do this. Oh, why did you do that? Oh, Nkechi, you shouldn't have done that to to yes. how about you, know, you did this instead of doing that? We are we are naturally born to negotiate is part of us. We negotiate with our husbands. We negotiate with our children that are going wrong and we're trying to talk to the daddy, oh, to the father, oh, be 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 gentle. We can bring those negotiating skills to the, to the table. Reconciliation table. To the reconciliation table. You know, so when there are conflicts, and I, I go back maybe to uh, 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 figures, even figures in the Bible, people like Esther. They were with absolutely so of conflict i mean if that conflict was today that have, if that yes. was today she would be a peace she'd be one yes, of the advocates peace, of peace, peace building definitely she brought peace to her country she did that and as a woman she was able to go in there you know and 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 negotiate peace in such a way that a whole nation was saved there are a lot of women that are doing that with we see deborah too in the Bible. and i think to an extent uh uh Queen of uh, Queen Amina of Saria, mm. you know, because she was fighting for her for, people. Yes, with you know, men peace. included. I mean, included. They, they so, followed her. Yes, so women should be brought to the table. We have a way of seeing things that is different from the way men see it and can book a peace. We bring in our negotiation, uh, our, our ability to negotiate, our nurturing uh, gifts mm -hmm. that are God-given, and we make everybody smile at the end of the day absolutely which results in world peace yes which results <laughs> in world peace at the end of the day at the end of the day yes. again as i always say beneficial to all at the end of the day so it's not really a situation of um if we if we keep her in one place then she stays there and then nothing changes nothing changes it's better when you empower the woman on every level, right yes. from the, being a young girl into growing up into a young lady. Yes. And as time goes on, just so that we can enjoy the benefits of it all yes. at the end of the day. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I also wanted to add, to add that men have to uh, be sure of themselves, have to have a lot of confidence that when they are raising women up, that they are not going to um, overshadow them or lord over them. They have to show love to the women folk. I think that most women are looking up to the men to play their roles as leaders. Hmm. You can see, a man can see a woman and all, all he wants is, is just the pleasure. Why? Why don't you see a woman and want to love her, build her up, and make, make her become mm -hmm. some, Support somebody? Support her dreams. But all you want is just that picture. And then after that, you cast her away and say that women are just... The only thing they good have for to one do thing. is, is it, they are not good for any other thing. But you didn't do your own part. Mm. Mm. So it's very important that women, men play that leadership role. That, that is very true. To, that to is play. very true. Now, I want us to talk a bit about um, the grassroots. Yes. You said you work with a lot of um, women mm. in the grassroots, so mm. you know their pains. Yes. You've seen how they live and you understand that there's so much more that can be done. But before we get there, I want to ask, do you think that the Nigerian government, because everything we're discussing starts with our own home, do you think that the Nigerian government has done enough for the Nigerian woman, for the average Nigerian woman, particularly when we talk about economic empowerment? Now, before you answer, I must say that we, we've had people on this platform who have talked to us about um, different 
um, small initiatives that have been started out as a support to women with um, hairdressing, tailoring, and all those other little things that are given back and forth. And they always say the same thing. The government can do a lot better. They always say the same thing. Some of them even say, it's not that they're not doing anything, but they can do better. So would you say that they're doing little and can do better, or that even the little is not, is not being seen? The impact of the little is not being seen. What would your honest assessment of the extent or the efforts of the government in women empowerment, women economic empowerment in Nigeria be? Um, I, I'll begin to uh, I'll start by saying that government needs to have the will. Hmm. We need to have the will. It's not, it's not just, oh, paperwork, oh, this is this strategy, this is the plan. They have to have the will to help. If you don't have the will to empower, you're not going to go the extra mile. You're not going to sustain it. It's not going to be sustained over the years. So it is important that the government, and you know, when I, I talk about the government, it includes all of us because we're all, uh, we are the people that get elected into the government. So we all have to have that will and that passion. The men folk have to have the will and the passion to empower women. And once that passion is there, once the enlightenment, the knowledge is there and the passion is there, the, the sky is not even the limit, it's the starting point because your eyes have opened and you have understood the value of, of empowering a woman. You know it's not all about putting you down, but it's all about helping you to influence and to be a blessing in the, in your, in the society. So it is important. The government in some certain ways have done their own path. Um, as a lawyer, I know that the Supreme Court had made some certain decisions that helped in economic empowerment of women. I, 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 I was so happy when uh, the, 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 the decision in Mojeku versus Mojeku came up that had to do with women inheritance rights. Absolutely. The that changed gave, the game it, it completely. It changed the game. And it's, it's, it's a big one for women because women were so much disempowered before that. You could imagine a woman that is married, but maybe married married and is economically disadvantaged in the marriage. And then her father, who is wealthy, mm -hmm. dies, you know, and gives all the inheritance to the sons and nothing to this woman that is suffering because, you know, it's not part of the law. The culture. The, the culture. And it's, 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 it, it's very painful. So when the decision came, came it helped to empower women. So I think the courts have done very well mm. in that direction. Not just about the unmarried woman because, you know, the law will say, okay, we provide yes. for the, the native laws will say we provide for the unmarried. But what about the married woman in a disadvantaged situation? situation. There's a lot of them that are in disadvantage, but they cannot gain anything mm. you know, in that direction. So in that part, yes, they have. But government needs to embark on capacity building. Capacity building workshop for women. Capacity building workshop for even men as well, to understand the need for economic empowerment. It's not just to provide skill acquisition and all that. They need to know the importance. They need to understand the importance. Ignorance has to be taken out. You know, enlightenment or the importance of economic empowerment for women is so key because with that, we can do so much more and we can sustain it for years to hmm. come. See, I like your point about... Capacity building. Yes. But where does that begin? Where does that begin? Now, we understand that most times education begins at the from childhood. You know, it starts from there and then it, it goes on from there. Some people don't go to universities, but to a large extent, their uh, primary and secondary education has covered a lot of the education that they receive. And they probably delve into other things that do not necessarily require uh, a standard tertiary education. Yes, yes. So, but to a large extent, Formal education aside, when you mention capacity building, where does that begin? And mm -hmm. how does the government even begin to implement this? Um, part of, uh, you know, we talked about the education system. The education system is not exhaustive enough. Mm. It's not exhaustive enough. And that is why informal education is key. And informal education should also be inculcated, you know, in our education system. You know, education is not just, it shouldn't just stop at uh, um, H2O, water, um, um, hydrogen 
and water Oxygen makes so how makes does it affect water. me mm-hmm. honestly how does it affect me or oh, obi goes to school and comes back or oh, the wind how does it affect me on a daily basis mm. so capacity building character building skills acquisition the uh, um, business skills should be part of our curriculum leadership skills should be part of our curriculum personality development should be part of our curriculum it just doesn't stop with what we have and that is why we're producing graduates that are not worth any metal in the labor market in the labor market because they don't have the capacity they don't have they don't even have research skills Mm. and for you to do research you have to have the ability to stand pressure you have to have the ability to stay all night and do the work you have to have food on your table you have to you know be mentally alert yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot and i think that if the government can look into those areas and begin to add these things in the curriculum begin to make sure that it, it that it, it's not just about the the what we have in, in the books but about building the personality mm. of each and every young person because what we do is that we actually go about we go around schools trying to build the capacity of should, uh, of young people young we tell people. them why do you have to cheat You've got what it takes. You've got a brain, you're 100%, oh, you, you know, uh, you're not different from that person that got an A, you just need to work hard, mm. you know? So we try to build that strength in them, inner strength, inner capacity in them, so that they, when they come out, they're not only um, uh, they're not only providing for their for themselves, they are providing for the community, they're providing for, for the world. We try to let them see the big picture and to think big, be- big and have it better, think, have a better version of themselves think themselves from a different point think of themselves from a different point of view and mm. so these are all these all all these things are very very important and those things need to be included in know, the curriculum as, in the curriculum or s- capacity building workshops should be set up to build up you know young men and young women and you know the society in general mm-hmm. just imagine hearing that character development the capacity building on a day to day basis, basis yes. For every child yes. across states in Nigeria, I, I just what, imagine the one impact. Public school. I tell you what, in one public school, uh, uh, the, the teachers were telling me, you see these children, they can steal me. They can actually kidnap me right now. I said, these children that I'm talking to, yes, as small as they are, they are rogues, they are thieves. I was shocked. And these, these public school children, they are an integral part of the society. Because these are the ones that grow up, they become, you know, what, what are we producing? I was scared. I said, okay, so what are we going to do? I start, we started this workshop for them, hmm. trying to let them know who they are and why they shouldn't be involved in, 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 things, in, like in that. things like that. And it was so helpful. And we, we also need to talk to the teachers. We need to build the capacity of the tr- teachers because the teachers are the parents that the children see. That's true. Most, That's true. most of the time. That's true. Because when they come back home, they probably come back about around three or four and their parents are not even there because they have to go out to make ends meet. Right, yes. So the, the teachers are key. So we're also embarking on capacity building for the teachers so that they can begin to impact, the, impact virtue, impact character, impact integrity, you know, in the lives of these children. So Absolutely. that what we have is a holistic individual mm. at the end of the day, you know. And Thank you. Our country Thank you will be so better much. for it. Thank you so much. I was going to ask how this relates to the grassroots, but I think you've already answered that because to a large extent, um, if this applies to the grassroots and the people who are not in the grassroots, on some level, when I hear grassroots, people think, oh, local, remote communities. Mm, and technically, us. yes, that, that's your average definition of grassroots. But then there are people like us who are not living in the local remote communities, but also are still not uh, exposed yes. to some other opportunities or even just basic knowledge yes. about things that you can do outside of your own individual space and yes. basic Monday, I mean, math and English that were taught and all those um, gender roles that were given on it that is basically impacted or implanted, that's the word, implanted yeah. into us mm. from time immemorial. Mm. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So I think your answer now mm. just encompasses all of that, whether grassroots or oh, otherwise. Yes, yes. Okay. 40 minutes past, um, 20 minutes actually, 20 minutes to four on your women radio WFM 91.7.
You're still listening to Women in Sand Mining. The phone lines are open and you can call to join the conversation. We're discussing today the significance of women's economic empowerment in building lasting peace. The significance of women's empowerment in building lasting peace, women's economic empowerment in building lasting peace. The line, the, the phone line to call is 07000 917 917. 07000 917 917. You can also do well to send a text or a WhatsApp message to 0703 175 6537. 0703 175 6537. I'm still in the studio with Patricia Piogold Ezechi, legal coordinator. Project Women and Youth Network. I'm not going to lie, I'm having um, such an enlightening time because to a large extent, some of the things we know, but when you hear it from somebody who's more versed in that area, you, you get to hear just from a different perspective and the depths of what you didn't know initially. Now, still in line with women's economic empowerment, what approach does the UN Women, peace, and security agenda. Take what do they, what approach do they have towards women's economic empowerment and how to move that agenda forward, how to improve it. I think they have a laudable goal uh, because um, part of the um, uh, agenda, well, the resolution. I think uh, resolution thirteen twenty five. There's a, a particular a key factor there, and it talks about training and capacity building mm. for women. Um, uh, in terms of gender equality. I use the word gender equality again. And when I say gender equality, I want everybody to understand because people don't understand yes, gender equality. not sameness, but equal. Not sameness. You know, I, I didn't understand it previously until I had to read a lot about gender equality and understood it. it's all about having everybody at the table, not discriminating the fact that, oh, this is the male child and this is a, 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 female, a child. female child, so she's not going to be part of, you know, the discussion. This conversation. No. Hmm. You know, so it, that's what we are talking about. And so um, ca the capacity building uh, agenda there is, is so key. The training and the capacity building agenda is so key because when women are trained and women, are, their capacity is built, they'll be able, they'll be confident enough to be involved in peace keeping and conflict resolution conflict resolution so i think that uh, they are, they are, they are, the project is a good one it's it's moving on forward there are many uh, aspects to it there are aspects of uh, there are times you think oh, when it comes to conflicts especially in in periods of war that what would a woman mm. do in, in 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 situations like that but that's where the appeal of a woman comes in there's just something about a woman, I have mentioned it before, that make the men drop their... Pause and just listen. Yes, and drop their weapon. It just takes an intelligent, a most good number of times, an intelligent, beautiful woman with the brains to just come in, in between the conflict and use her wisdom. Let's allow the women to use their wisdom because they've got a lot of wisdom. Absolutely. They've got what it takes. We're not just objects. You know, one of the celebrities said it recently, I was not happy. That women, apart from you know sex, that, that's the only thing they can offer. They don't don't got anything. You know, I, I guess he was talking about young girls, and it's unfortunate. And that's why we're building the capacity of exactly. young girls to exactly. know that they've got more to offer. And they shouldn't it, listen to celebrities yes, like yes. that. We've got a lot to offer. You know, we can we can change the world and make it a better place because we have the power of influence. You know, so with that, I think they are they are moving in the right direction, especially when it has to do with resolving conflicts. Women should come to the table and let's feel the presence and the nurturing uh, uh, traits that a woman have to calm the nerves of the men <laughs> and to make them come together. Because mm -hmm. we've been doing it and right from... better. Yes, right from the family. We've been doing it so we can do it at the, at the larger level. So, so it's a good initiative. Thank you. Let me let me draw your attention to post conflict. Everything we've been talking about conflict resolution, it sounds more pre conflict situations than post conflict situations. We cannot say that there's an absence of conflict because there is conflict yes, everywhere. everywhere. Yes. So, but in situations where the conflict has already happened, yeah. Um, Pigeon will say bad as bad. It don't already happen. It has happened 
how to move forward. So how does women and comic empowerment play a role in post-conflict situations that affect women? Um, when you talk about post-conflict situations, you're talking about continuing, is it a continuing problem? Because, you know, when there's conflict and the conflict ends, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, the, the, the society begins to go back to status quo. In going back to the status quo, women, um, ha they have the responsibility. I always say that if the government or if the society or if people around you are not able to empower, empower you, you should take steps to empower yourself. You don't have to wait for government to empower. Take small steps. Mm. You don't have to wait for anybody to do anything for you. We, are, we, we were born to be, we, we've got all it takes. We've got our talents. We've got our skills. We can take steps towards empowering ourselves. So a woman post-conflict can take steps towards empowering herself. All she needs to do is to seek knowledge, seek opportunities for knowledge, seek opportunities to improve her, her mental, her spiritual, her physical, her emotional well-being. And if she takes, takes those steps, because post-conflict, a lot of things are still... May, may just be still at uh, uh, at a very uh, um, grim level because people are trying to come back, come back to from, status quo, as you said. Yes, but a woman has to just rise up and tell herself, I can do this. I can make it happen. I have my children looking up to me. And funny, uh, what women don't understand is that the men also look up to them. I mean, the men also look at the woman. You know, so the woman has to rise up and say, we can do this, we can make it and infuse um, faith and positivity in the lives of our children, in the lives of, life of her husband, in the life of the men around her and take small steps. And if you take small steps, you don't know what is mm. waiting for you. So I think that it, it, it's a call because there are rising conflicts all over the world Absolutely. and women are getting desperate. No, they have to come together. They have to, and women have to learn to support each other and not to be envious of each other because together we can. So we have to rise up and say, what can we do? Where can we come in and make that change? It starts with us. Mm. I will always say inner, inner strength is very important. Inner peace is very important because if you don't have strength on the inside, you can't become what you're supposed to be. You can't fulfill your potential. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was going to ask about um, how women can support the agenda for economic empowerment for women. Because there's this, <laughs> this widespread mindset, which here at Women Radio, we're working on changing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because people always say, oh, women supporting women is a hoax. Women supporting women is, uh, is a fraud. It's not something that can actually happen. happen. So that's why when we talk about things like this, I like women to understand that in whatever capacity you occupy, particularly if you're in a position of power on some level, because there's hierarchy will always be there, will yes. always be present in life. Yes. So some people will be just a little bit less privileged than, than some other others. people. Yeah. And what happens to those women who are lesser privileged um, when these women who are more privileged don't do anything to uphold them, to lift them up? So that's why... I, I was bringing your attention to what women can do. Women who have reach, who have influence, who have a certain level of authority and power. How can they play a certain role or what role can they play in advancing the, the of cause women. of women economic empowerment? I think that uh, women have a lot to play, a, a lot of role to play in supporting women. And I dare say a lot of women are doing that. Mm. But we need more hands need on more. the deck because that the work is huge. We need more women. A, a, a great number of women are supporting other women, supporting poor children, supporting you know, poor families. With more people joining hands, women can make the difference. It's not true that women don't support women. Women do support. We have a lot of women NGOs. Mm -hmm. What are they there for? Support. So they're supporting women, fighting for women. You know, so we have, in fact, we have so much of it that we even started going into young people because <laughs> there's a lot. So we started working with young girls, young boys. So there's a lot. We uh, uh, Women are supporting. It's just that the, the work is huge and we need more hands on deck. Those resources that you have, instead of probably buying the next big jewelry or the next you can 
divert some of the resources. Having good jewelry is good, but you can divert some of the resources to helping, you know, these women. We, we go around and we see people living under the bridge, you know, women and children, and they're, they're getting, it's becoming more and more. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. More I don't know where people. they're coming mm. from. And it's a source of worry because conflicts can arise from there. Yes. You know, so we need to play a role. We, we need more people to support and to sponsor women to help women. We need more hands. We need more women to help in that direction. But they are, we are doing a lot we're, we're, we're doing well, but we can do better. Yes, we can do. But we can do better. Yes. So as we round off, what are your final words as regards the role that women in common economy, hey, oh, <laughs> the role that, <laughs> pardon me, the roles yeah. that uh, women economic empowerment plays in the life of, or in the longevity of peace? We, women, when women are empowered, they are at peace with themselves. And you can give what you don't have. If you are at peace with yourself, you can give peace to your world. So it starts with us. I will always say it starts with the woman. We have to build ourselves up. We have to take up that responsibility to build ourselves up, to become peaceful people, to become women of leadership. And I dare say, if we build ourselves, if we take on that responsibility and tell the men, oh, you're going to see that I'm not just body, but I've got content. Mm and we develop ourselves and build ourselves, we become beauty with brains, then the men will look at us and bring us to the negotiating table because they know, oh, this woman has a lot to offer. So it's both ways. The men have to work on themselves to know that women has a lot to offer and the women have to also work on themselves. Build capacity. Don't wait for somebody because if you're going to wait, you're going to wait forever. You've got to have a plan to build yourself up, to seek knowledge, to build capacity so that you can be at peace, so that you can be at peace, you can be happy, you can be fulfilled and you can bring it to your world. And that creates a, a lasting peace because once it's inside, it's forever, it's eternal. So lasting peace is assured. Hmm. Lasting peace is assured. You know, I, I have final words of my own, but I don't think at this point they are needed. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go with yours. Lasting peace is assured when men and women understand the roles that they have to play and the fact that both genders are not the same, but equal and have more than enough to offer. Yes. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today thank on Women Voices for Peace. It's been a pleasure having this conversation with you. Thank you very much. Thank you too for having me. Women Voices for Peace is sponsored by WANEP, West Africa Network for Peace Building with support from the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation, NORAD, and Women in Peacebuilding Network, WIPNET. Women Voices for Peace holds every Tuesday on Women Radio by 3 p.m. And in this respect, I want to say a big thank you again to our guest, to the engineers on duty, production crew of Taiwo Adelaye, Dabira Uluagbile, and Victoria Uwaifu. Join me again next week, same time, same station. I am Sumto Titilayo Ajamma. She's a virtuous woman. I can see why you do She's a virtuous